In the assignment for this week, there is a PDF. I want you to print out this onto plain white printer paper and it looks exactly as it appears on the screen. Now, if for some reason you cannot print, that's okay too. You can copy this onto plain white paper. The measurements are one by one for each of those little squares. So like that first rectangle would be one by one, two, three, four, five, six, one by six, there we go. So you can do it that way as well. Some of you may have experienced doing this before. So if I'm putting you through this again, sorry, still gonna have you do it though. All right, so that first one is called hatch. Hatch refers to a single stroke going usually one way, although that stroke can curve. For now, we're just gonna keep the stroke at an angle, but straight. And here's how this works. It's just like a value scale, like the one we did a couple of weeks ago, except for it's about how close together your marks are. So your mark making becomes incredibly important when you're trying to do a different type of shading method. So I'm doing the first square, value number one, and then I'm going to the last square. You don't have to do it this way, I'm just showing you this is one way of approaching it so that you know where you're starting and where you're going to end up. I'm actually gonna show you just doing it all consecutively in order too, so you can do it that way. Just realize that the last box has to be almost black, so make your marks really tight, close together, which is what I'm doing there on the hatch, so it's a really tight, angled, straight line. Hatching is great for shading. It's great for when you actually wrap or curve it around a form. It can be very expressive, very fun. A lot of old masters, like from the Renaissance time, use hatching or hatching and cross hatching in conjunction. So again, hatching just is one direction with your stroke. And the goal on this is to get a shift. So a shift in value. And remember, value has to do with how light or dark a hue is. So in this case we're talking about white and black. I'm just going to speed up this process that way you're not seeing me meticulously draw each line. It did take me about 25 to 30 minutes to do all of these in total. Ha! So there we go. Much faster. And again it did take me a while to draw these all out. Just realize when you're going from box to box to box, you wanna tighten up those lines as they move towards the right so they get closer and closer. You wanna kind of think about at some point, the black takes over the white of the paper so that it gets really dark. And there has to be a difference between each box. And I am doing this in pen. So I'm using a felt tip marker pen, but you have a big pen that's in your baggie if you picked up your supplies. All right, so now we're moving on to the crosshatch. Crosshatch is actually my favorite of all of these. And it, it is what it says. It's a hatch, but it's cross, like crisscross there. And I'm going loose, like fishnet stocking loose at first. But then for that last one, box number six, I'm going to tighten up that hatch so you can see barely any of the paper. All right, so this is the crosshatch sped up, so you can see I'm working tighter for the second box. You can go more than one way with your stroke, like for instance, you can go vertical or horizontal as well. I like when they cross, so I like that pure cross look. Um, just like with the hatch, you can also curve or wrap around a crosshatch around a form, which can look really cool. This is a technique that a lot of illustrators use. So it's probably something you recognize from somewhere and you just can't like put it, your finger on where. And it's probably from illustrations or political cartoons. As I'm winding things down for that last box, I'm going really close. Even doubling back and like hitting up a line again just to get it tight, you want to think of it like a mesh or screen. You just want the weave to be extremely close. Okay, that third row is called stipple, and it could also be called dotting as well. It comes from Seurat. So Seurat is a painter, and he actually paints in all these little dots. So 
This one you're going to hate me after doing. The first couple of boxes aren't so bad. It's basically like doing little polka dots. But the farther to the right you go per square, the more dense the dots become. So just like with the cross hatching and the hatching, it's all about how close each mark is to one another. And that creates the idea of value. It is a really cool effect. That's why I wanted to share it with you. But it is a labor of love. People who are technical and very patient can pull this off. And again, I've seen some phenomenal results from using this dotting or stippling method. It can be really cool. I'll show you some examples, but it does take a lot of time and it's meticulous work. I am requiring you to get darker as you move to the right. So again, that last box, the one that you can see up on the screen right there, that has to be more black than white. When you're doing this, if you're using a pen, which is what I'd recommend, make sure you come down at an angle. If you come down straight onto the paper and you press too hard, you're going to jam your pen point and break the tip or damage it. So you want to come down gently. You should not hear a noise like a woodpecker. So no lots of tapping. That it shouldn't happen that way. It should be a gentle drop down, lift up, drop down, lift up. You actually let your wrist do a lot of the work for you. Stippling takes a long time, but scribble is almost instantaneous and it's kind of fun. I like to make mine erratic. Um, this is a technique which actually works really well. And it's one that you guys are probably familiar with from your childhood. But you can create um, value just by the density of your scribble. So I'm letting my marks become erratic and multi-directional and um, you can lift up, but I'm not lifting up a whole lot there. I'm using a ballpoint pen, so I actually switched my pen for this so that the pen can flow a little bit easier. So it's not like a felt tip point or something like that. It's just a little bit easier to work with. And again, I should sh show you guys some examples of really good scribble art. You can make a person's face look very realistic just by using scribble. So the thing is, it's so easy to go dark with this that I'm even having a hard time those two boxes in the middle are starting to look alike so I'm gonna have to go in and repair those at some point. Like with all the others you just want to make sure that the last box is indeed the darkest value. So let that be heavy. I used a lot of ink on that last box. There you go. There's happening. So We'll check your mark making. Make sure that there is a progression from box to box and it's clearly visible. And then go ahead and turn it in.